everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. On today's feature, we will look into the technologies that have been developed to conduct rescue missions of the crews in bottomed submarines. Submarine rescue is a, is a difficult business. Uh, there are many unknowns and variables. Each submarine accident is, is different. So how do submariners get rescued from the deep ocean seabed? The submarine population is growing, and so is the dedication towards ensuring the safety of its crew. Every three years, several countries of the world partake in a live submarine search, escape, and rescue exercise called the Dynamic Monarch Exercise. Several NATO allies and observing nations gathered to train and exchange knowledge on saving crew members from distressed submarines. The exercise involved thousands of military personnel and civilians that develop tactics and test out the latest equipment and procedure that has been developed to handle a crisis when it strikes. This uh, is not about a war exercise. This is, uh, we are talking about save the life at sea. We, we don't have any, any distinction between save a life or another life. For us, it's important brotherhood. For us, it's important to be here and uh, be ready to save life. The sea can be a difficult and unforgiving element of nature and even harder to operate in during emergency situations. Technologies are constantly developed and upgraded to make the rescue more efficient and effective. The journey of the atmospheric diving suit dated back to the 18th century and was reported to be able to dive 60 feet deep. It has been further developed and refined and is now able to dive up to 2,300 feet with higher mobility and maneuverability. Known as the submarines you can wear, the suit is equipped with an emergency backup supply that provides life support for another 48 hours. The bright yellow SRV-300 is a deep submergence rescue vehicle operated from the Italian Navy Onteo submarine rescue ship. First delivered in 1999, the vessel can operate in a depth of up to 984 feet. The 980-foot-long submergence rescue vehicle has a displacement of 27 tons and can carry 12 passengers in the rescue compartment, in addition to the operating crew. Its builder, Dras Galeazzi, is currently working on a newer model that can reach a maximum depth of 2,133 feet and accommodate 15 people in the rescue compartment. The Undersea Rescue Command of the U.S. Navy took part in the Dynamic Monarch exercise, deploying the McCann Submarine Rescue Chamber. The Undersea Rescue Command consists of 145 personnel, 45 active duty officers, and enlisted officers, as well as about 100 contractors and reservists. The pear-shaped steel chamber is used to rescue submariners from bottomed submarines or unable to resurface. It was designed in World War II and can rescue up to six people at a time from the depth of 850 feet. 
Two crew members are lowered in the chamber with a tethered cable, and they are connected with telephone lines and electric cables for their operational need. It connects to the submarine's hatch to enable the safe transfer of the submariners onto the rescue chamber. The NATO Submarine Rescue System, or NSRS, is managed by the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense on behalf of two other nations, France and Norway. Operating in a four-hour cycle, the system is manned by two pilots and an attendant, and it can rescue 15 people at a time. Also known as SRV-1, the system is fitted with fiber optic umbilical to provide video feed, communications, and data link to the operators on the surface. The system is deployable almost anywhere in the world within 72 hours, which includes all of its three components, that is, the intervention system, the rescue vehicle, and the transfer under pressure system. The elusive submarine operation is often referred to as the silent service. They are unseen, unheard, and often undetected. They are operated by carefully selected and trained volunteers in the U.S. Navy. Besides academic and technical training, they must undergo three phases of physical training and testing to see if they are able to adapt to the intense pressure differential between the surface and the operating depth of the submarine. The submarine schools offer basic theory, build, and operation of the nuclear-powered submarines. They are trained to conduct firefighting and damage control to isolate or diminish arising problems. For decades, one of the most important training courses still remains to this date, the escape chamber. The students are trained to escape from a disabled submarine in 40 feet of water to prevent serious and potentially lethal implications when not done correctly. Their mental and physical capabilities are evaluated and monitored to ensure they can cope with the dangerous and often uncomfortable life in the submarines. The Naval Submarine School in Connecticut hosts a number of modernized submarine simulators to familiarize the enlisted personnel and officers of the real submarine operation. The surrounding was designed to replicate the submarine bridge down to the green paint of the wall. So our submarine bridge trainer up here is a way for us to take modern training opportunities and bring that to the waterfront for the submarines so they actually get real hands-on, real-world in-theater training opportunities so that when they go on a theater, um, you know, everything is familiar, right? They've seen this before, nothing's new, right? And it kind of just helps get that battle rhythm and get those submarines out of port safely. Whether it's berthing the submarine, resurfacing through ice, casualty scenarios, the school provides realistic, relevant, and challenging training for the submariners to better prepare them for the dangerous environments and scenarios ahead. While the training and technology have changed over the years, the submariner's mission remains the same. The desire to become a submariner needs to be accompanied by the physical and mental capability to operate hundreds of feet below the sea surface. This is the career of the chosen 5,000 officers and 55,000 sailors who made up the U.S. Navy submarine force.
The volunteer position just proves their love for the country and the desire to uphold the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.